What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. Today marks the short form video of the live stream that we did for episode 3 of the Free to Play Beginner's Beginner Guide. So I wanted to sit down and want to talk to you guys. We did a lot of stuff today. I didn't anticipate, you know, getting on this. I thought that the stream was going, it, going to be itself only about 2 hours and we were going to play. But then we started playing, having a good time, ended up pushing all the way to 10-10. So I want to talk about some key things here about really squaring away your gear and all the stuff really that you need if you guys are in the beginning of the game how to really progress and get where you need to be using only the adventurous path gear and really positioning your team in a way that's going to allow you to progress quickly. A lot of people were really shocked that I made it all the way to 1010 10 so fast especially this only being day three playing the account because as you guys know i'm only going to be playing this account on stream so when i'm streaming this is the only time that i'm playing this is the team that we finally settled upon i ended up finally getting my terrano royal guard so i'm going to run him for the front line for the tank as we prepare for Wolfman 11. I'm just going to run Aether as the healer. I'll pick up Montmo and stuff as we go. But that's just what we're going to roll with. Clarissa is going to be my damage dealer. And Bale is going to be my other damage dealer. Now what's important about this team composition guys. Is that we have the defense break from Clarissa on 1. We also have a secondary defense break for Bale and Suzanne. I've started to Molagora and enhance my heroes now. So when we're looking at Clarissa. We're working on getting to this 10% effect chance for skill 1. So we have up to 50% chance to land the defense break. And then I'm also working on Balan Suzanne to get his skill 3 uh, where it needs to be. So we can get the max effect chance available here with you know the plus 4 as well. So I definitely need to get in and farm Catalyst. What I'm doing right now though is now that we're starting to lock in the gear. As I'm going through and I'm starting to position my team in a way... It's going to allow me to progress very fast. So I'm getting the Orbis Orbs. I'm going to be maxing out the Blacksmith Building as fast as I possibly can to reduce the amount of money and materials that's going to cost me to craft 70 gear. Now, when I look at this, 70 gear is the first pinpoint. That's the first checkpoint. Literally, guys, once you get to 70 gear, there's literally nothing you have to worry about. You can literally use 70 gear to get everywhere. You can use 70 gear to get through all of Abyss. You, pretty much most of Abyss. You can get 70 gear to get all the way to Wyvern 11. Pretty much all the way through Automaton Tower now since they nerfed the hell out of it. But that's something that you guys need to pay attention to. So if you guys are at a situation where you guys are farming because we made it up to Wyvern 7. Like once you get to 6 guys and, and if you guys can farm 6 or higher consistently. Or if you guys are in the 6 to 7 range. Like be okay with the progress that you guys are making here. Because any 70 gear that you craft here is really going to help catapult your progression. Especially if you guys understand you know how to build your heroes. If I can recommend anything for new players here you guys need to definitely learn or get a general idea. How to build your heroes team composition strategies all that stuff is going to come over time but if you understand how to gear your heroes it's going to help you so much so if you guys are paying attention you guys are following along i've mentioned before on my damage dealers which you know we'll get into here in a second when we look at the gear i'm typically looking for ways to get them as much damage as possible for my supports i want to get them as much you know basic stats speed hp defense you know stuff like that and once you guys start to understand those fundamentals you'll find that a lot of the stuff that you're working on will definitely 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 fall into place so once you guys get to six seven this is where you guys can start getting into your 70 gear 70 gear can be really really good guys so this is a good place to stick for a little while until you upgrade your gear once you guys start getting into eight eight is where you start getting the 85 crafting mats and this is really, really good for you guys too. So like, don't be afraid to farm these stages for a little while. Because once you guys start getting the 85 crafting mats, I mean, it's just a matter of RNG there. Crafting some gear, you know, getting some decent drops, especially as you get into 9 and 10. Here is where you guys are going to really start to feel your progression start to move up. And we'll go over that once we start moving in into that position. Now, we also made it all the way to 1010. So when I got to 1010, 1010 was kind of like my big gear check. Where she just stomped us out and we weren't even close. Like these other ones I was able to fudge with like, you know, using like some of the random reps that they provide. Right with the people that were also close to my rank at like rank 23, rank 24. Uh, but when I got to 1010, like I literally just got pummeled, right? So getting to 1010 was kind of a kind of a big thing. So this let me know that I really need to go back and really adjust my gear. Because when I looked at my team composition, the only two heroes that were really geared were Clarissa and Bale and Suzanne. So with my Clarissa, these are her stats right now. She's at 83% crit, 208% crit damage. Uh, I went ahead and rolled with the crit chance net because like I said, the most important thing 
is getting your crit chance to 100%. So that way you can stabilize your damage. After that, you can kind of do whatever it is that you guys need to do to, you know, get more gear, which is basically farm. Now, this Destro set that you guys are looking at right here is from the Adventurer's Path. I just used that. And then I also use the other uh, attack crit set from the Adventurer's Path on Bell and Suzanne. So we're rocking with the crit chance here again. The goal is to get to 100% and as much crit damage as possible. And of course, some effectiveness. So we're rocking the 35% effectiveness here and rocking the 55 over here on Clarissa. Now, I finally started, you know, gearing my Aether. If you guys are wondering why Aether is on crit, it's just because, you know, it just is what it is the gear that I had. I like to get them on like an effectiveness set or something like that. But, you know, I'll deal with that when we get to it. <laughs> But that's what I'm working with right now. Now, in terms of sets, I want to get him as fast as possible. Now, in the beginning, guys, and this is really crucial, it doesn't really matter what, you know, your substats are when you're getting your initial set. So, like, what I like to do is just get my speed set on him so I know exactly what I'm running. And then from there, I ask myself, okay, what stats does Aether need? And then I'll go, okay, he needs attack percent, he needs HP, he needs defense, he needs resistance and speed. Right, so thinking about that, those are the subsets that I'm looking for. But eventually, I'd like to have all his gear with health, defense, speed, and attack percent, right? And maybe some resistance floating around there somewhere, right? But that's kind of what I'm focusing on. And then, in terms of my terminal royal guard, the way that I'm gonna position him is like when you're looking at your heroes, you got to try to understand their kit, right? So he deals damage proportional to his own max health. So I want to maximize his health damage, right? So I want to get him as much crit as I can, right? Because I kind of want him as a bruiser. So I'm going to get him with, you know, as much crit chance, much crit damage as I can, as much HP. Again, shooting for Wyvern 11 goals. So as I'm shooting and going through these, you know, regular Wyvern floors, I'm still thinking, okay, I want 18k HP on him, 1400 defense, and I still want, you know, 100% crit, as much crit damage as I can. Now, this is not to say that I'm going to get these stats, you know, overnight or, or relatively quickly or, you know, whatever. But it's just something that I'm keeping in mind so I can continually work towards my goals. And I set them down in their own paper. They're set in stone. And I'll take every little step that I can take. Now, the beautiful thing for me about Terminal Royal Guard is that when he's even when he's not dealing damage, he's dealing damage because he reflects 30% of the damage suffered from a critical hit. Now, the reason why I want to get his health so high is because the damage that is reflected can't exceed the caster's max health. So if he's getting crit for, you know, 5k, 6k, then I want 30% to return to the, to, to the boss. And then eventually I'll probably put him on like a Daydreams Joker or something like that. So we can deal a little bit more damage stacking on top of the health-based health, health -based damage. Now, if you guys are wondering why I'm using Terminal Royal Guard instead of like Crow or something like that, it's because I'm not using Crow or Cecilia because it's not easily replicatable, right? But in the process, as we go through the beginner portion of this free-to-play beginner's beginner guide, I want to use heroes that are accessible, right? So like Bill and Suzanne, for instance, you guys don't necessarily need to use him, but he's a hero that you can get out of the selective summons. And Clarissa, same thing, you can get her out of the selective summons. Terminal Royal Guard, you can just pretty much, you know, scratch your button, he, he's like, and he appears, right? Aether is everywhere. You guys have probably, like, pulled a million Aethers. And, and he's super accessible. What will happen, though, is I'll eventually kind of chain into Montmorency. So that's something that I'm looking at there as well. But in terms of gear, guys, that's just basically what I'm looking at as I got this. Now that I have my central team in place, I'm literally not focusing anything else. If I summon something else, great. If I summon something that I can use for Banshee, great. But all I'm focusing on right now is this team and getting this team the best gear that I could possibly get for them, you know, in, you know, obviously a reasonable period of time. And then the spillover gear that, let's say, maybe I have a chess piece that, you know, okay, now I just got this dope chess piece, but I don't have nowhere else to put the old chess piece. Then at that point, then I'll start to build a new hero. So staying focused at this point is probably one of the most important progression steps Right now, it's easy because what you guys will start to notice, especially as you guys go through the adventurous path and you guys are moving through the game, your crystal count is going to start to stack up. So it can be really, really tempting at this point to really start summoning and start wasting your crystals. But at this point, like, take the advantage, use all the free leaves that they're giving you, you know, farm out, get better gear, improve your team composition, whatever team composition you guys have, have arrived at. And then from there, like, let your crystals stack because once your leaves and all those free materials run out, then you'll have crystals to refresh, farm, keep farming, keep improving your team comp and the flow of your progression. So anyway, guys, that's all I wanted to cover today. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. 
Hopefully in the next episode, we'll be able to clear 1010 and then we'll definitely do the Moonlight Summon there as well. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy Damone and we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.